Today, I'm diving into some exciting experiments with 90A TPU on the Bamboo Lab H2D. After my initial prints video, I've been very curious to see how this printer would perform with other flexible filaments. And so I decided to put it to the test. I've prepared several models using 90A TPU and even ventured into multi-material prints combining PETG high flow and TPU together. Let's jump right in and explore how my H2D performed. So I wanted to test my H2D out because I have tons of experience printing TPU on my X1 Carbon and P1S printers. And I wanted to see how it would compare in terms of quality. And I definitely wanted to use the multi-material printing capability because my other printers don't really have that. They don't have the dual nozzle system like my H2D does. TPU has been challenging for me to print in the past and I've had to do some tuning on Bamboo Studio and I wanted to check to see what kind of stock performance I could get. Can I use system presets? And can you use system presets to get the same results that I'm gonna get? Or are we gonna have to do some tuning to get this thing to perform the way we want it to? Now, I do wanna briefly say that this is not a comparison video, so I'm not gonna be comparing my X1 Carbon and my P1Ss to my H2D. You know, I'm kind of going to like mentally compare the print results with stuff that I've gotten in the past. You know, I've kind of discovered, generally speaking, if you've got really dry filament and you print really slow with TPU, you can get some excellent results. Also, the extruder system on your printers plays a huge role in how the TPU prints. Since I have Bamboo Lab printers, I don't really struggle with the extruder system since they're all direct drive. For this video, I used 90A TPU from Bamboo Labs, and I made sure that I dried it thoroughly before starting these prints. And, you know, there might be a tiny bit of moisture kind of shown throughout, but for the most part, it was very dry, and the results I got were very, very good. Bamboo Labs 90A TPU has great impact and wear resistance, so you know the parts that you print will last a long time. Since 90A TPU is not AMS compatible, I actually used the Polybox poly dryer system. And uh, I've used this guy many times, it works great. And I can set it kind of just right on the side of my printer over here and just have it feed directly into the tool head. As you can see, this has desiccant included, it has a humidity sensor. And right now I'm at 12%, which is super dry. I also have my center spool desiccant holder in there as well to keep it extra dry. Now I do also wanna mention, I did not use the TPU port located on the back of the printer. I just fed it directly into the side of the printer over here, just to make things easier for myself. I don't really wanna to have to pull this thing out and feed it through the back. I will say that using that method can be challenging to feed it into the head because it's got a you know decently long filament path. So just keep that in mind. Now the nozzle temperature that is on the system preset is 225 degrees Celsius. The layer height that I used was 0.24 millimeters throughout this whole test. And the volumetric flow in the system preset is set at 2.8 millimeters cubed per second, which works out to be approximately 28 millimeters per second at its fastest speed. Once again, for all of the models you're gonna see, I used stock system presets. The only thing that I did adjust was the support area for the models that ended up using PETG supports. And what I adjusted in the support section was a zero millimeter top Z distance for the interface layer, a zero millimeter pattern spacing to keep the pattern really tight, just like a normal layer. And then I also made the support XY distance 0.5 millimeters, just to give me a little bit of a gap between the actual parts and the PETG. And I do also want to talk about with these PEI sheets, TPU sticks really well to them. So you don't really need to add glue. Now, if you ever struggle with removing TPU parts from your PEI sheets, I highly recommend getting yourself a spray bottle with alcohol in it and just using this and just going around the part on the plate, just around all the edges and just spraying the edges of the part so that the alcohol can work its way under there and your parts will come off way easier, way cleaner. And you, you know, you really don't have to use a scraper to get it off if you use this method. Okay, now, so the first model I printed out was actually this small TPU tire. And this thing came out fantastic. As you can see, the outer surface looks great. It's very, very squishy. Definitely squishier than 95A TPU, which makes sense because the shore hardness is softer. Um, and the only thing that I noticed about this one was there's tiny little like pinhole artifacts kind of on the outside surface. And that definitely could be due to moisture, but I did dry this stuff really thoroughly. So, you know, it is what it is. Overall, fantastic result 
for the first print. For the second print, I went with my golf ball holder, my golf ball and tee holder design. And I love printing this one out because it's got a great smooth outer surface that I can really look carefully at artifacts and stuff that kind of show up there. And this one also came out really, really good. Um, once again, there's tiny little pinhole marks, but I mean, it's nothing crazy. It's nothing like I've seen before in the past. And overall, this print came out awesome. The T's fit inside of the slots really, really well. Actually better than the 95A because it's a little bit squishier. And the golf balls also fit really well in here as well. So, so far, super happy with how the results are coming out, especially considering I'm feeding the TPU through the normal buffer port. I'm having no issues with clogging or skipping, nothing like that. Also so far, I've noticed zero stringing with the TPU, which means that you know, it's, it's relatively dry. I don't, I'm not having issues with the retraction. So far, the, the HGD has been performing really well in that regard. Before we continue on to the fun part, the multi-material prints, I wanna give a quick shout out to this video sponsor, PCBWay. While they are renowned for PCB prototyping and assembly, they also offer a comprehensive 3D printing service. Whether you're working with FDM, SLA, SLS, or even metal 3D printing, PCBWay provides high quality prints with a variety of materials. Their platform is very user-friendly. Just upload your design, fill out the required fields, and PCBWay will handle the rest. And it does not stop there. They also offer advanced CNC machining services, sheet metal fabrication, injection molding, and pretty much any manufacturing method that you can think of. So if you're looking for a comprehensive manufacturing partner, PCBWay is a perfect choice. I'll be showcasing some machined parts from PCBWay in a future video, so if you're curious how those turn out, subscribe to watch my upcoming content. Head over to pcbway.com for more information or click my affiliate link in the description so that you can get a cash discount on your first order. Thank you so much PCBWay for sponsoring this video. Now, back to the printing. PETG and TPU pair very well together. Although the materials don't adhere that well to each other, they can still be used in a variety of methods in the same print. You can use PETG as support material for TPU and it works so well. But you can also design models that intertwine and intermesh with each other so that you still can use PETG and TPU in the same prints and get some really interesting, stiff and soft characteristics in one print. I don't really rely on Bamboo Studio to add support interlocking or the interlocking feature. I don't really rely on it that much. Uh, so I like to just model it the way I want them to print. And so typically I'll model bodies in place so that when I go over to Bamboo Studio, I can click cut into parts or cut into objects. And that way I can get kind of the result that I'm looking for and I can select which material I want each body to be. Doing this and modeling parts with interlocking features can get around the poor adhesion between PETG and TPU. Okay, so first I'm gonna show you guys my model that basically uses interlocking features to create the stiff and soft part that we're looking for. Here are my little spine designs that use yellow is the PETG high flow and then the blue is the TPU in between. And so as you can see, these guys are flexible, but they have these stiff spines uh, between each like kind of joint. And so you get this really interesting model where you have that flexibility, but then you also have this stiffness of the spines. And so I, I thought that this was a really cool way to kind of showcase interlocking the TPU and the PETG together. And so I did that by modeling the PETG rings and the TPU, I guess, sleeve or sock that goes underneath it. There are separate bodies that I modeled in SOLIDWORKS. And so each one of these rings is a separate body. And that means that I can go into Bamboo Studio and cut this model into parts and then go back and select each of these rings to be the PETG high flow instead of the TPU. And so that's how I'm able to get this really cool print that has both materials. There we go. That was using PETG and TPU as interlocking parts to give you a soft yet stiff model and this is using PETG as support so you can create a fully flexible model. I never thought that this would be possible but look at this. This is a 
a fully functioning, working half wallet that I designed and printed with my, my H2D. I mean, this thing came out awesome. Like I said, the supports kind of came out with a wallet and uh, you know they're, they're pretty strong, they're pretty stuck in place. But if you just use alcohol and just kind of douse the TPU in alcohol and then get a scraper or maybe even just a credit card and just kind of work the credit card or the scraper through each of the pockets, you can just remove them. And then you end up with a flexible model just like this. Isn't that awesome? So, so cool. Now, after printing this, it got me thinking, and this is when it got really, really fun. So, for the next attempt, I actually have a an extra wallet. I'm not sponsored, but this is an awesome wallet I've had for, I don't know, five years now, maybe. And it's got this little lever action, makes the cards pop up. Well, I kind of thought to myself, like, hey, that's just an aluminum wallet with a leather shell wrapped around it. Could I design something in TPU, maybe make my own shell? Well, that's exactly what I did, and it came out so awesome. So I designed this one to basically print just like this with the flap already folded over so that it kind of has that memory so that when you open it, it flips back shut, just kind of like the leather, very similar to the leather wallet. And I mean, this thing came out really awesome. It's even got a cash strap. It's got a, a flap on the back. It's got card areas. The only problem was the dimensions I modeled were incorrect, which basically meant that the wallet that I had bought on Amazon to go with this thing just didn't fit. And so I had to move on to the next one. For the next one, instead of having the flap kind of over the top of the wallet for that memory, I just thought that maybe the weight of the cards you know, once you loaded it up, we we'll just kind of keep it in place. So I went with an all flat design, just like this. And I kind of adjusted some of the dimensions. And then I started to get this wallet to fit. And it was really, really cool to kind of see it come to life. I had to do this, you know, a couple more times to get the dimensions just right, and to get the tolerances right. But what I ended up with was a super cool 3D printed wallet. I mean, just look at that. So you can put cards, you can put cards back here in this back pocket. I've got like a little scanning card. The wallet section works just, just great. I mean, this thing came out exceptional and look at that. The flap is awesome. This stuff is wear resistant and abrasion and abrasion resistant. So I think it's going to last for quite a long time. And yeah, I mean, just look at that. I have a fully functioning RFID blocking wallet with a TPU shell. How cool is that? Now I've been waiting to do this until I got on camera. So let's see if I can, this is a half wallet. Let's see if I can tear this thing apart to test the durability. Okay, well that's, that didn't work. Big pocket is a no. Second pocket is a no. I'm putting a lot of force into this. I'm telling you guys. I'm telling you, this stuff is super strong. Like once TPU lays down on top of other TPU, it's got crazy good layer adhesion and I cannot rip this thing. You might stretch it out a little bit, but I mean, after all of that, like I think it looks pretty good still. So in terms of the longevity of the wallet shell, I think it's gonna last a really long time. It might actually outlast leather. You know, I don't know. TPU is thinner. It's, it seems like it's gonna be more abrasion resistant. There's no seams or there's no like sewing lines. So maybe it'll hold together better. No. All right, that's gonna be a wrap on this video. So far, printing TPU has seriously, it's been a breeze with the H2D and doing multi-material prints with PETG and TPU combined is so fun. Seriously, it never gets old. And I feel like the possibilities are truly endless. And I'm really excited to see what you guys come up with in the future as well. In this video, I only tested Bamboo 90A TPU and I do have 85A as well. If you guys wanna see other videos where I test other shore hardnesses or maybe other brands, just let me know. If you guys found this video helpful or if you learned anything, please consider subscribing, hit the bell notification icon and leave a comment down below with how I can improve my videos and maybe what video topic you'd like to see next. All right, this has been Sam with Muxle Makes. Thank you so much for watching.